Hey guys, today's position is a fun one. It's white to play and draw from this position. The pawn is going forward. What move should white play here? All right, guys. Well, if you had a chance to look at that, what's going on here is black has two rooks, but white has the option to take them in a couple of different ways. You also have this pawn and bishop, which are kind of cryptic as to what they're doing there. We'll talk about that in just a second. So the first obvious move you might consider is well, what happens if I just take the rook? Well, that's not good enough because when black takes here, you're also going to lose the pawn. And then you have a rook a bishop and a king against the bishop, which is going to be a win for black. So it's not good enough to just take the, the rook right away. So the move that white needs to play is knight to f4 check. And we have this kind of triple fork here. Obviously, we're mostly interested in the rook and the king. We don't really care about the bishop, uh, but we have this fork to kick things off. Now, black has to make a decision. Where do they go with the king? And the obvious move is to just take the pawn. So king takes f3. However, if they do this, they are not going to win because white's going to simply take here. And it looks like the bishop is hanging, but it's not because if black takes it, we have another fork and we go into this drawn endgame. Nobody's going to be able to win this. OK, so that's the first kind of idea. So we put the black king in check. They cannot take the pawn. So the next most logical move is king to g3. You're putting pressure on the knight. You're also still attacking the bishop, but you avoid the little fork by not taking the pawn. Okay, great. So now we're white. We have two options here to take the rook. If we take with the bishop, well, then we lose our knight. Similar situation that I mentioned before. This is a loss, right? But we could take it with the knight. But then again, same kind of thing. We lose the bishop. And again, this is going to be a loss. We don't have enough pieces here against the rook and the bishop. So what should white play instead of taking the rook? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is knight to h5. And the point is we're going for a different fork on the other rook and the king. And again, black has to make a decision. Um, we're going to come back to this move later. King takes f3, but king to h4 is kind of the main line of this puzzle where they keep chasing the knight. And now, what do you think white should play here? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is knight takes g7. And it's pretty interesting because normally when you line two pieces up against a rook, you have to be really careful because the rook is going to just attack them and you can't save them both. For example, if you move the bishop, you lose the knight. If you move the knight, you lose the bishop. However, in this case, we have the uh, nice move knight to f5, another fork, which saves the position. And because of that... Uh, rook to e7 is not a viable move. However, there is a couple other things that black could try. One of them is the move bishop to d3 check. And the point is black's throwing in this check because now the bishop controls the f5 square. So we no longer have that fork, right? So we move our king and now black can play rook to e7. And it looks like we're losing a piece, right? So what do you think uh, white should play in this position? There's only one move that saves the game for white. Well, if you looked at that, the move is bishop to c4. And the point is we are giving up the bishop for free because we were going to lose a piece anyway. But if black takes it this way, they've allowed the fork that we talked about earlier. And this is, again, a drawn position. If they don't take the bishop and they take the knight, well, now we're also threatening to take the bishop. This is also going to be a draw. We can just simply put our bishop there and the pawn defends it and black can't do anything. So because of that, black says, OK, I don't want to take the knight. I don't want to take the um, the bishop. But what I will do is play rook to b7 check first. Remember, our point was that we had the, the follow up knife work, right? So black is being very clever getting out of that. And after we move somewhere, now black says, OK, now I'll take this. And then after the king takes, I'll take the knight. However, white has another trick here. What's the move that white should play now? All right, well, if you looked at that, the move is knight to f5 check. And the point is, it doesn't really matter where the king moves. We don't care. We're going to follow it up with yet another fork, knight to d6. And black can't save both of these. Obviously, if they you know give us the rook, this is a very easy draw. And so if they try to save the rook, let's just say, I don't know, here, we're still going to take the bishop. And this is also a drawn endgame. OK, so because our king and knight are centralized in a nice position, black's not going to be able to win. I believe I've covered this in another video on the channel. I'll link that uh, down below if you want to see the technique 
for uh, drawing with the king and a knight against a king and a rook. There's some some situations where you can win with the rook, but uh, things have to go right for you. The king and the knight have to be split up or on the edge of the board or something like that. Anyway, very nice finish with a whole bunch of knight forks in this one. However, there is a flaw in this study, uh, which Stockfish with a table base on finds. And so let me go back and show you that. Uh, this was not caught, I guess, when they submitted this original puzzle. So we talked about the, the original fork and how Black doesn't want to take the pawn because after you take here, uh, you can't take this because of the follow-up fork. And so Black can do something else. Let's say they, you know, I don't know, move and then the game goes on. This is actually a drawn position. The, the knight and the bishop against the rook and the bishop, okay? But notice these pieces. They're not in an awkward position. They're not stuck. They're just there, okay? Let's go back and following the main line, king to g3, knight to h5, check. I showed you guys what happens after king to h4. That's what we looked at, where there's all these different forks and the different ideas uh, about the knight and the bishop potentially getting lost, right? But if black takes this pawn now... This is actually a win for black, okay? And it's not easy, but here's the idea. Both of black's rooks are hanging. White can choose which one to take, but there's a problem in both situations. So if we take this one with our bishop, here's the problem. Uh, black is going to play the move rook check. We move our king, and then they play here. And what they're doing is is trapping our knight okay so if you look at this knight carefully it can't move here and here because of the rook it can't move here because of the king and it looks like it can escape here with check but then there's a king fork which is not something that you see very often but now we're losing a piece to the king doesn't matter which one we save the king takes the other one right so because of that the knight is actually trapped and it's being attacked. Now, we can defend it for a move, but then the king's going to come here. Again, you can see the knight is totally trapped, right? You can't go to any of these squares. And because of that, eventually, uh, we move something, and black simply plays rook to g5. We're losing the knight, and then this is now a losing endgame. So that's one idea. And then if we go back, the other option that white had here was instead of taking this rook, they could take this one, right? But again, we now run into some issues with the placement of the pieces. And it's not as obvious as you would think, because if they go for this, you know, trying to skewer these, it gets a little bit tricky because you can throw in the bishop check and the game kind of goes on. But what black can do instead here is play rook to b6 check. We have to move our king somewhere. And then they can play king to e4. And again, we end up with the same kind of situation where our pieces are kind of misplaced, particularly the knight. And it turns out that there's not really a good way for white to proceed. So, for example, if you try to centralize your knight here, black's going to play rook to c6 check. You move your king to the side, and then they play bishop to g4, attacking that knight. And you're just going to have to trust me on this, but the stockfish table base is showing this is a lost position. So, for example, the knight comes here, the king comes over. Very complicated, but notice the knight. It doesn't have any good places to go to, right? It has to kind of run over here. And again, it kind of gets trapped, essentially, has to keep running, and eventually this happens. So this is just one example. There's lots of different variations here, but the point is with very clever play, which probably only Stockfish or a table base could find, it's actually losing. All right, so it's a really nice study. It almost works. Uh, most humans probably wouldn't have caught that because a human looks at this and thinks if you take this, you know, you, you take here, the game goes on, it looks fine for white, probably going to be a draw. It's actually not. However, regardless of that, it was still a nice puzzle and the lines where the king goes to h4 and you have all these different knight forks that are popping up, uh, sacrificing the bishop, you know, fork, fork, it, pretty cool stuff in my opinion. So hope you guys enjoyed that one and I will see you next time. As always, stay sharp, play smart, take care.